YouTube. Today I'm going to talk about a wide variety of PCOS related symptoms and conditions. Um, again, the subject is PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, and um, let's just get started. First I'm going to talk about hirsutism, which is excess hair in places that it shouldn't be. And hirsutism is more of a symptom of a condition than a, you know, disease itself. It causes um, hair to be in places like on the face, the chin, or the chest of a woman. And those are places that usually a man will get hair. And it's caused by high levels of insulin or increased levels of androgens or testosterone. Those are male hormones. Um, well, testosterone is. Let's see. Obese women are at high risk of developing hirsutism because, um, I, I don't really know why. I think because of the insulin resistance that is associated with being obese. You don't have to have diabetes to have hirsutism. Just get that. All right. And hirsutism is more of a, you know, cosmetic issue. Um, women, we as women, really don't want to have hair on our face, our chin, or our chest. And it could be embarrassing. Uh, there are treatments available. There's a drug called spir spironolactone. I hope I got that right. And there's laser hair removal. I think that's expensive, though. I think, uh, you know, you might find a health insurance company that will cover laser hair removal, but, you know, if you can't, some good nair or some razors, just get it to work, you know, take it off, shave it off. Um, sometimes, you know, women don't always want to shave because of the bumps or it'll just grow back thicker. But something that we PCOSers, some of us anyways, have to deal with. All right, next symptom or condition I'm going to talk about is acanthosis nigricans. Nigricans. I hope I didn't just say that word. Um, it's black or brown or poorly defined velvety hyperpigmentation of the skin. Basically meaning dark splotches um, against your skin. I have that. That's one of my symptoms. And I've been dealing with this since I was 12 years old. It's not nice. It's not nice. And people just think, oh, oh my God, what's wrong with your skin? Oh, what are you, a leopard or something? Or, oh my God. And usually it's areas that are on the neck, the groin, the forehead. I get it on my chest. And, um, I got it right here too. I don't know if you could tell. It's just uh, insulin resistant related. Again, PCOS causes insulin resistance, meaning you know you don't process insulin the way that everybody else should. It doesn't mean that you have diabetes though, but it puts you at a high risk for developing diabetes. Next, I'm going to talk about. Vitamins. Vitamins are something that a lot of PCOS women take in order to control their symptoms or get their hormone levels back into where they should be. Um, personally, I'm on vitamins B6, B12, and selenium. B12 helps with energy. It helps my metabolism. It gives me a boost. It also helps with anemia. Yeah, that's what I was reading it off the bottle. And B12. Yeah, I'm taking 100 mcg of B12 a day. I'm also taking B6. B6 helps maintain your hormone balance. Again, PCOS causes hormone imbalance, so that's essential. And selenium. Selenium is a vitamin that has been said to help reduce the risk of certain cancers. But that hasn't been proven by the FDA, so don't quote me on that. 
Uh, PCOS increases your risk of endometrial and cervical cancer. So taking selenium, you know, just to be precautious. And, and again with the B12, you could take it in pill form. Or you could take it as liquid. I've taken both actually and um, just started on the B12 pill. The liquid, it, it, it works faster. It'll work right away. Snap. You'll have energy. It'll be a boost. Essential. Okay. And then I'm going to move on to the foods to avoid when you have PCOS. I like to eat. That is my thing. I really like food. And it sucks that, you know, um, with the hormonal imbalance that PCOS causes, your cravings go up. You know, you want the food. You want the food that you're not supposed to have and, you know, self-control, blah, 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 blah. It's really hard, you know. But if you want to take the step in order to um, help your body maintain its normal balance and maintain a healthy weight, which is essential because, you know, not maintaining it, you're going to have problems. You're going to develop diabetes, high risk for heart attack or stroke, high cholesterol, and all those bad things. So again, the foods to avoid. I've got a lovely list here. All right. Here, let's get started. You should avoid sugar, processed foods containing sugar. You should avoid sodas, even diet sodas and all carbonated drinks. Avoid cakes, large meals, biscuits, white bread, canned food, fried food, sauces, sweets, non-organic milk, stimulants like coffee or black tea, and what you should do is have small frequent meals throughout the day. That's why they say avoid large meals because you know you want to help build up your sugar your blood sugar levels and yeah that's it and that's all I have so far um, just you need to um, also diet exercise uh, you don't have to follow the foods to avoid you know I mean we all have slip-ups we all, you know, want to have the food we're not supposed to. And you shouldn't really beat yourself up if you do, because we're all human. But in the long run, it will help if you avoid maybe that soda or if you avoid that piece of chocolate or, you know. But we're just human, so, yeah. Uh, that's my video on PCOS related symptoms and conditions. Thanks for watching.